Okay, I'm back. We're going to ta start talking about the material actually in Chapter 4 right now. Um, I'm getting out my book here so I can look at things. And um, um, the first thing in Chapter 4 is it talks a little bit about um, um, the file system hierarchy, um, slash, etc., um, slash, home. Um, and so on. Um, let's just go over to our file system here. And let's do a CD command. Let's see now. To get up to the, um, up, up, up to the root, I would have to type, um, um, <clears throat> to get up to the root, I would have to type um, um, CD space slash. And then if I do an ls, I get a list of all my directories. And um, some of these are like um, things that I have put on the system. Don't mess up your top level directory. But occasionally, you'll have something that you just really want on the system. And, um, and you may want to put it at the top level. I put a system up here called alt-sys. Um, I've got. Um, um, and I'll talk about that some at some point in the class. That's where I build a. That's where I build my system upgrades, basically. Um, let's see. Um, and the book goes through, or we may have already gone through and talked about most of these directories. Um, slash media is basically where. Um, Thumb drives and new removable disk drives usually get added. They can be added any place, but that's the most likely place for them to get added. Either there or if they're kind of permanently added long term to the system, they may be added under slash MMT. Uh, slash home is where all of your um, user files exist. Well, we don't have many users on this system, and it appears to be Seuss and D. Mandel. But you know, that's cool. Uh, slash um, etc is one that I might mention here. Slash etc basically has most of the system configuration files. A lot of those system configuration files are kept in um, as text files. So as an example, if I go down here under slash etc and list everything in, say, the password file, um, that's something. Um, actually, that is a list of all the users on my system. And many of them are background users. They don't actually log on to the system. They get logged on automatically when I boot the system or boot some subsystem like the Postgres database or the MySQL database or um, um, some mail server. Um, others like SUS and dmandel are actual users that have to log in onto the system. So um, anyway, there's lots of files of that type in um, slash etc. It's common to have to go into one of those files in slash etc with your good friendly e editor, Emacs, VI, Pico, Joe, Kate, whatever, and actually edit one of those um, files in that area. And um, you may need to be root to do that because of access rights issues, but I, I don't know. That's Actually, today's topic, isn't it? Access rights. Um, OK. The other area of interest, a lot of these are of interest, and we have talked about them earlier. But I want to talk a little bit about the slash var. Slash var has lots of cool things in it. Among the cool things in slash var is slash var slash log, which has most of the system's log files. Typically, when you make log files, that's the area they're put into. 
in Linux or Unix, there's always exceptions to every rule. So I won't say every log file always is put into slash var slash log. But that's, boy, that's the first place I'd look, because that's where most of them are. Um, OK. Um, back to our book. The book has a section on page 140 where it talks about managing files and directories, um, um, talks about the use of the cp command, the um, ls command, and um, read that. And then it has a thing on finding files where it talks about the use of the locate command and the find command. Now, the locate command, I don't even have on my system. I don't use it very much. Um, I believe you need a locate database, although I could be wrong about this, so I shouldn't say it in the video. But I believe you need a locate database to find files using the locate command. Um, there's another command called where is that tells you the location of a file. But it only works if you have a where is database. And if the file you're looking for is in the where is database, I believe that's the way the locate command works. An alternative is the find command. And find, um, where am I? Whoops, let's go to my home directory. OK, suppose I want to find a file someplace in my home directory. Now, I'm afraid I um, need to find a file to find. So this is kind of, but OK, there's, a, there's something called CIS something or another. The way I would find a file is I would type find space, find from, um, and then I have to put in the location I want it to start searching in, which in this case is uh, slash home, slash dmandel. Or actually, that's my home directory. Or that, well, it's my home directory. So I could actually put squiggle or tilde. Or uh, also, since it's the directory I'm at right now, I could just put dot for current directory. And then I'll put name. And then I'll put the name of the file I'm looking for. And let it go. And guess what? It found my file, which is under dot, or current location under videos under this. What happens if I don't know the name of that file? There must be a way of putting in kind of a wild card type thing so that I could put in something like, like star. Now, the problem is that won't quite work because the star, because a, um, the shell will expand that star and won't pass it to the find command. It will actually get executed by the uh, bash shell before it ever gets to the find command. I can prevent that by putting the thing in quotes, which basically tells bash, don't do anything pass that just the way it is to the find command. And then find should find that. And guess what? It found that, but it found too much. It found, well, guess what? All of those guys begin with the letter, or have the letters I, S, capital I, capital S in it. So it basically did the right thing. Um, OK, that's cool. Um, Clear is a command I don't use very much. It clears the screen, or it clears the uh, my X term, the window I'm working in. Um, I use it in videos. Otherwise, I don't hardly ever use that command. Um, um, OK. Oh, the other thing about find is suppose I wanted to find this thing here, but I wanted to find it at the top system, starting at um, so, uh, the root. OK, no problem. I just find this like that, starting at root. Um, oh, that's not very good. That's not. Oh, 
IS, so it is finding it uh, just the way it's supposed to. It's finding lots of junk. Um, and it's not getting what I wanted it to get. OK, let's go back here and let's type this in again. Let's type CIS. I think that might do better. There we go. Good. Now let me type a Control C to break out of that command. I've got lots of garbage here. Permission denied. Permission denied. That's because I don't have permission to look at all these files. So one way of getting rid of that output is those are those go to standard error. They don't go to the um, standard out. So if I redirect standard error, which is logical unit number two, to the null file, which means go out into the air, just disappear, in that case, I should not have all this output. And you see here, um, I ask it to type this command in, and it's just not finding many things that start with the CIS, um, because there aren't a lot of files there that start that way. And we are now looking through three terabytes of data. And this is going to take hours to run. Well, not hours to run, but 15 minutes maybe to run. There we go. And um, that's the downside of Find, because Find is looking at every file on your whole entire system. Um, it can take forever and ever and ever to run. So um, well, no. I mean, I mean, it's a good, useful command. I use Find a lot. But um, remember, it can be a slow command if you let it look at your entire system and you have a system with three terabytes of data on it. So um, um, it, it, it can be slow. Um, before we leave Find, one thing that is kind of cool to do is let, let's find something shorter here. Let's, let's go back to doing it on our home directory. And sometimes when I run a big, hefty command, I type time in front of the command that I'm running. That will then, as when the command finishes, it tells me how long that command took to run. It says here that in real time, it took like 0 0.034 second or 39 seconds to run. At user time, it took that much to run. And system time, it took this much. I usually look primarily at real time, um, although real time isn't always too good a predictor, because if the system's bogged down with tons of other stuff, the real time will shoot up when actually the amount of CPU or I.O. used isn't, uh, you know. The CPU and I always go into other tasks. But so real time is not always a good uh, measure. Uh, this time command I use a great deal in benchmarking processes. Uh, this was a command I used a lot when I did, a lot, uh, when I did uh, software development to tell how long certain things would take. Uh, the other way to do that is to embed timing commands actually into your software, which I did too. But as just a dumb first step measure, using just typing time in front of your command is a good way to get um, uh, to benchmark how long something's going to take to run. OK, we're done with that portion. Um, um, the book's very clear on most of this stuff here. Um, OK, and the next section talks about link, uh, uh, links and uh, um, link, link files. And there is no equivalent in Windows to links. Some people talk about um, shortcuts as being an equivalent to links, but they really aren't. Um, they're just really, this is a, this is a Unix feature. Um, there's two types of links. Um, there's what I call hard links. And then there's soft links or symbolic links. And we'll take those up as soon as I come back. Um, time for coffee. Bye-bye.